So, hey guys, Bleaks here, back with another video. Today we're going to be doing, as requested, a tier list of all the items, and here's a hammer watch. So I say all the items, but it's going to be minus the Queen's Decree items. Uh, I found this tier list, and it has like 159 items in it. So this thing has 162, and there's five Queen pieces, so you minus it, you go to 157. So we have two extra items in here somewhere. There were some duplicates, so I went ahead and took those out, and some items that don't actually exist in the game. Uh, so I took those out as well, but I must have missed one or two. Here's just a quick little look at the list. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be uh, ranking all the items. So we have S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier, and then literally unusable. Um, most likely, literally unusable will be pretty much empty. I'm also not a person that puts a lot of stuff in S tier. So S tier is going to be for the best of the best, creme de la creme. There's probably only going to be like maybe a handful of items in here, if any, right? Uh, top items, those are going to be like your very meta items, very good. And I'm going to talk about everything. Um, we have to keep attunements in mind, so I'm going to explain that in a second. We have very solid items, or okay items, which are like take it or leave it. And then, hey, D tier is like, well, I found something and I'm not excited about it, but it's literally better than not having an item. So anyway, the first thing we need to talk about is attunements. So attunements, the way it works with the anvil is you attune an item and it acts as if there's two in your inventory. As you can see, not everything is attunable, but most things are. It's like 137 are attunable. So anyway, that's something to keep in mind. Um, if the set bonus makes something really powerful, I'll try to keep that in mind and talk about that when we get to it. And what else? What else? What else? Um, yeah, some items are really good early on, but fall off later in the game. And some items are really good later in the game, but aren't very good early on. So I'm going to try to explain my decision making like the whole way through. But anyway, let's get started. And I'll be looking at each one just to uh, have a reference. So anyway, uh, the first one, this is the zeal. This is a common item. So this is when killing an enemy, you have a 10% chance to drop a symbol on the ground that gives you plus 20 skill crit chance for five seconds. The symbol lasts for five seconds, has a cooldown of two seconds. So you can basically have this up 100% of the time, except on bosses. And when you attune it, this 10% chance effectively goes to a 20% chance because you have two of these in your inventory. But what happens is it still only puts, you know, one symbol on the ground that gives you this buff. You have two symbols on the ground, it doesn't really do anything. So uh, it's pretty good for skill crit. Uh, for skill builds so I'll put this in the okay items it's good but it's not like amazing there's more consistent ways to get crit it doesn't work against bosses uh, that's kind of what's up with that item next we have this uh, the bloodthirst blade I believe what's it actually called blood letter so it's a 10% chance to apply bleeding on enemies for five seconds on primary attack so this uh, heavily kind of forces you to be using your primary, so skill-based characters don't care about this as much. And you have plus 25% damage done to enemies that are bleeding. So it does still work with skill builds. You just have to activate the primary, get them bleeding, and then your skills do 25% more damage. So that's cool. When you attune it, this goes up to 20% chance, so very good. This is a, a very decent item. Um, I'm also going to put in OK. I think it's even better than the Zeal just by how it functions. You don't have to worry about killing things. You just have a chance on hit, which I think is stronger than chance on kill. Next, we have the Amulet of Resistance. So this is the one we looked at just a second ago. Plus five magic resist. So uh, this is really good. That is a common rarity. I'm going to try not to take rarity into account too much, just basically like the stats on the item itself. And if the item is garbage without the... Uh, the set. I'll probably just put the set all together and we'll uh, we'll do it that way. But anyway, uh, plus five magic resist. I mean, you really can't complain about this. I would say this is a very solid item. Um, it's not like the most you can get. I guess it's more okay. It's not the most magic resist you can get because there's some items that give you 10 uh, without being attuned, so they go up to 20. So I guess I'll put it in the okay items. It's uh, definitely an item I personally like and seek out. Next, we have Amulet of Kings, which is one of the best items in the game, I'd say, at least early on. Later, you get enough resist where, where you have enough HP pool that you can survive everything without the extra resist. The set bonus is great. Uh, the only issue is like its rarity. So this is gonna be definitely A tier. Very, very good item. 
plus 30 resist, 60 when you attune it. Next we have Amulet of Vengeance. So Amulet of Vengeance is a 10% chance to trigger combo when taking damage. You attune this, it goes up to two 10% chances, so effectively a 20% chance, but not exactly. Um, and yeah, it's just an alternative way to get in a combo instead of using Phonetic Eruption or um, using a drink that when you pick up something you get in combo, yada yada. It's just, it's like the second best way to get in combo in my opinion. So I will put this as a okay item. It's not really used anymore. Um, so if you're using the Phonetic Eruption and you get this, you're, you're kind of just happy because you're like, okay, I might go against like the Watcher and I'll take damage, I might get in combo. Whereas otherwise, you have to just keep hitting with your abilities and hope you proc the combo. So it really depends. Um, you can't just build around it and drop Phonetic Eruption, and that might make you more biased towards it and move it up. It used to be the go-to way to get in combo, but it's kind of fallen off. All right, next we have the Apothecary Herbs. Yeah, Apothecary Herbs. So drinking your potion triggers a 50% movement speed buff for five seconds. This is not attunable. So what you see is what you get. You drink your potion, you get 50% movement speed for five seconds. And that's it. <laughs> five seconds, a little bit of movement speed, requires a whole potion. You really don't have a lot of potions to be thrown around with this. Um, I don't really see a tactical way. It's really just, it's just bad. It's just all around bad. But I will have to say it is more than nothing. There is a case where you're dying, use your potion, you probably heal up to full or pretty good and you get the movement speed and you run away and then you're like wait i'm at full health i'm gonna go right back in so it's it's better than nothing what else can i say all right next we have the apothecary mortar and pestles so this is a pretty cheesy item um you so anyway potions increase armor and magic resist by 50 percent for five seconds and this one is also not attunable so what you can do with this is especially against like Thunder Snow or a boss, you especially Thunder Snow because he's the last boss and you're okay with using potions against the last boss. You would just use a potion before anything even happens just to get the extra plus 50 magic uh, in armor resist. And even if you're negative, this happens before the NG minus is applied. So it still gives you that nice bonus. So this is, a, this is an okay item. Um, I, I almost want to put it in very solid, but it's so niche. It's really just against Thunder Snow because you can't reliably sacrifice your potions to like the Watcher or something to uh, try and get an extra like defense boost. Next we have Apothecary Satchels. Potions are 50% more effective. So this one's also bad. I mean, it's going to be more than nothing, but the idea is your potions become 100% more effective because you're going to tune this. But early game, your potions heal for so much if you just put anything into the apothecary that this is going to overheal you by like more than double your health in late game your potions are so weak that even doubling them doesn't do anything so it's just a very awkward item like maybe in the middle mid game this would be fine but anything revolving around potions is generally just not good because you kind of go away from potions they're a limited resource and you switch into lifesteal and yeah that's basically it. you just switch into lifesteal at some point and you don't care about potions anymore all right, next we have Chainmail. So Chainmail is the plus five armor, I believe. Yes, plus five armor, attunable, goes up to 10 armor. This is an okay item. It's a, it's up there with the magic resist one. You know, they should be kind of equal. Uh, very happy to see it all the time. It's also part of a set, so it makes it a little better, I guess, because uh, you can eventually get the four piece of the set and have 10% reduced damage taken, or it leads into like an additional five attack power, five armor. But even as a standalone item, five armor is very okay. It's uh, definitely something I'd pick up. All right, next we have the thorns item. This is, where is it? Uh, Mail of thorns. All right, return 15 damage to the attacker when hit, plus two armor. Also attunable, so it's going to double this. So you'd have four armor and two return abilities. So anyway, that's a, it's very fine. This one gives you five armor when it's not attuned. This one gives you a little extra something. It's also just going to be okay. There's going to be a lot of okay things, especially common items. All right, full plate mail. So this one is 15 armor. So triple the effect of this uh, regular chain mail without being attuned. And when you attune it, it's equal to armor of kings. So very good item, especially at the 
the uncommon level because you can find this way more often than Armor of Kings. So if you attune this even before Armor of Kings, you kind of have two Armor of Kings in your runs that you can potentially get. It's also part of a set. The set is okay. Um, so this is a very solid item. I'll say that. Very solid. Uh, next up, we're going to have, as we said, Armor of Kings. This is plus 30 armor. Uh, before you can attune it, it's still really good. And then when you attune it, it goes up to 60 armor. That's pretty crazy. This is up there with the Amulet of Vengeance. I would say Magic Resist is more or less more needed than armor for the most part. Because um, most people play Paladin early. You want Magic Resist, and Paladin gives you armor. So then on your next characters, you already have a good amount of armor. So then you get Magic Resist so you can progress them. And then eventually you get both of them up and you kind of don't use these items anymore. When you find them, it's still great, but you don't really go out of your way to start with them anymore. All right, next up we have the Dragon Scale Mail. So this item is insane. Take 25% less damage. So, you know, sometimes Armor of Kings or Amulet of Kings is good, but they just protect you from one damage type and they're not percent based, so they don't like scale with you as well. Uh, later in the game, you know, you might have thousands of health. You get an extra 25% less damage. That's basically 25% additional health that, you know, the enemies have to go through. So this is insane. This is an insane item. I would say the best item in the game, most likely. Um, we're going to keep going through, but I think it's it's definitely top tier. It is a cut above every other item in the game, without a doubt. Without a doubt. All right, next we have Wrath of the Thunder God. Shoots five lightning bolts in an enemy. Uh, when hit dealing 10 magic damage so it's pretty nice like damage bonus you can do some uh, evil infusion type things and actually gain the health off of this so that's kind of cool uh, but generally it's not something you like seek out it's kind of like a niche like like cheesy item that you can play around with so I'm gonna put this in the okay items uh, it kind of fits up there with I mean if you're doing an amulet vengeance uh, wrath of thunder god build you know these items would be higher but i think it's just an okay item you're never really going out of your way for it but you're never really upset when you get it next we have stormcaller 10 percent chance to re release a chain lightning on your primary attack dealing 30 magic damage so this is kind of an interesting item because it works with your primary but the damage is a skill so it scales off your skill power but works with your primary so you kind of want one of those like characters that's kind of in between uh, which is fine it's still like a, a solid item but I don't know if I can say it's really solid. I'm just going to put it in OK because uh, it's kind of wonky. If it's scaled with attack power or something, it would be insane. But here we are. Or not, not insane on the tier list, but very solid. Next we have... I mean, this one's plus 15 health. You attune it, you get 30 health. Pretty nice because um, that kind of works as the same as the regular chainmail and the emulator resistances. It just gives you extra effective health. Um, but this actually protects against both since it increases you know your health uh your effective health versus magic and your effective health versus armor so another okay item xp book this is 20 percent increased xp you can attune it you get some more this is like a utility thing this isn't going to help you like complete the run any better or any faster or anything like that it's just going to give you like some more levels i'm going to put this in a uh a more than nothing it doesn't really give you like stats for your characters that you're you're really looking for when you're trying to like progress or do something um but it's like you're kind of happy to see it but it doesn't give you real stats so you're not like overly excited to see it all right now we have all of the books or all of the pamphlets so each of these increases your experience gain and damage dealt to a type aberrations beast constructs and undead so undead is the best and they're all going to be okay, but Undead is the best, for sure. Followed by uh, followed by probably Beast and then Aberrations. Um, you could swip the, swap those two, but I like the Beast for Thunder Snow, and if you find it in Act 1, it's good in Act 1. Some people care more about dealing more damage to the Aberrations in Act 4, um, so you could say, you know, this would be here. You could switch these two, but they're really about the same and constructs could probably even go like down here because uh they're just not nearly as prevalent in the game especially in the tower so i'm just going to put like 
it's more than nothing. And then the set gives you 5% damage, so that's why the, the more than nothing is like actually decent. It it technically gives you stats because you deal a little more damage to a couple more units and you get more XP. Well, not the XP, but then the set bonus gives you 5% damage, so you do get some stats, but it is like barely. You're barely getting anything. And then we're going to go straight into the encyclopedias or the monster manuals. So it's the same thing, but it's 20%. So it's 20% XP, 20% damage, the aberrations, beast, constructs, and undead. So this is going to be the same thing, just better. So these are okay items, and they're just going to go higher up. So again, uh, undead is the best. I'm trying to see. So this one's the undead with the skull on it, of course. And then these aren't going to be in like a perfect little order. So I'm just going to throw these up here. And I'd even say the 20% one is still like more than nothing. The set bonus does give you 10% damage, so at least there's that. But um, they're not like super exciting. The undead one kind of is, but the rest are not nearly as good. I could maybe even say the undead one should go to very solid. Either way, uh, next up we have the spell book. So this is just 10 spell power. This is a common one. If I can find it. 10 skill power, and then you attune it, and it goes to 20. So, I mean, this is a pretty good item. Um, it's pretty good damage, so this is going to be okay as well. I've seen a lot of okay items. Um, there's, I mean, there's just, like, not a lot of make-or-break items in the game, but there's a lot of, like, nice utility things. So now we have right boot of speed, and I'll try to find the left boot as well. Um, they're pretty much equal. <laughs> It is weird when you get one and not the other, and one of your feet is very quick and the other one isn't. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna put this as an, an okay item, even though it's just utility, so it could go down here, it doesn't really give you stats. The amount of utility it gives you versus some of these other ones is just super good. But we gotta put both boots up there. All right, so there's the other boot. It'll go in the same place. Let's, uh, wow, <laughs> it looks uh, kinda stupid. All right, next we have this bow. So Elven Bow gives plus 20 attack power. So this is kind of a sleeper item. You can attune it, you get 40 attack power. This is similar to the full plate mail where when you attune it, it becomes basically a Sword of Kings. So I'm gonna say this is a very solid item, very good damage item. Um, I mean, some of these other ones could maybe move up. Like this one's teeter-tottering. It gives you percent damage, which is very nice. This one gives you, you know, flat damage. Well, I guess they're both percent, but it's in like, a different way anyway next up we have heart seeker so this is an insane meta item probably one of the best items in the game 12.5 percent chance to score a critical hit on primary attack so you attune this you go up to uh, 25 percent and you are just doing crits it also the you know you have your normal crit from your character then you have the crit from the blacksmith then you have heart seeker then heart seeker again because you attuned it so you have four instances of crit and you are just destroying things if you get those quad crits. So this is a top item. It also is a very good in the mid to late game. Not as good early because you just don't have it attuned. You don't have luck. You really need these defensive items. But later you drop these defensive items. You start using Heart Seeker and like Lucky Hat. And you are just rocking and rolling. You don't care about this defense at all anymore. All right, Cape of Withdrawal. Uh, so I, I know what this one does when you get hit you get a 33% movement speed. I'll find it real quick Yeah, getting hit 33% movement speed for three seconds and it is a tunable so you get uh, double <laughs> uh, This is it's more than nothing. It's something sometimes I pick this just to try to go faster on my runs, but it's a uh, It's not like a insane item or anything like that Next we have Cape of the Flame Walker. So Cape of the Flame Walker burns enemies for 10 magic damage. And it's not a tunable. I wish this was a tunable. It would go up to 20. That would be awesome. But it's not. It also uh, makes everything around you burning so that turns on like the Darien statue. So that's cool. Um, you can scale it pretty well with percent damage and with penetration and whatnot. It also scales with skill power and crit but it doesn't scale with skill speed and there isn't a way to increase the cost which is usually the way you want to increase the damage of things with like using the Wilmer and the Cedric statue but since you can't do that it kind of holds it back but I love playing with this item um, I kind of want to put it as a top tier item but I think it's just a very solid item 
it it's super fun early game because you can scale it so well and it just works on every character it makes like grinding early super easy but i can't say it's a top item because you, you don't use it in the late game it's just very good early next we have medusa's charm so enemies you look at are slowed by 50 percent and have their armor reduced by 50 enemies affected by the gaze you hit are stunned for six seconds so this is basically for a build that does more uh physical damage than magic which really isn't any build in the game it's also a legendary so you often can't really control when you get it it is nice to have i mean even if you're a skill based build you look at the enemies and their armor is cut in half which works well with like some hybrid characters like the sorcerer or the priest is hybrid on his uh, main hand but even if you're playing like the ranger or something you look at an enemy uh they get you know stunned and that's pretty good it's nice utility but it's nothing like to really write home about i would say it's uh probably in the better than nothing category or more than nothing um i wouldn't get too excited when you find this it is nice it's just not like crazy probably in like almost okay but just not quite there Ooh, this this might be one of the worst items in the game so this is i don't even know the name i don't like this item so much circlet of willpower so when below 50 percent health skills cost 25 percent less damage or sorry cost 25 percent less mana and you can attune this uh which is fine um it kind of counteracts some of the late game builds and doesn't really do much early um because it, it messes with the damage statue from wilmer and it actually reduces your damage in addition to like the lower cost and in the late game you don't really have an issue with mana cost you eventually get enough sorcerer ng levels and you have enough uh sustain from critting and using the harry magus that you just really don't care about this item um i would almost put this in literally unusable because it's it's not even better than nothing you kind of wish you didn't have this sometimes you want it for the two set bonus to get that plus five resist but that's about it so i'm gonna put that in literally unusable because uh it is so close to it it's just gonna go and fall into it next we have one of the best items in the game slippery cloak six evasion you can attune it because of 12 evasion that's a lot of evasion for one item especially a common item um yeah it's just a super good item this is it's gonna be a top item the item is so good it uh yeah i mean it might it's probably like here honestly evasion is so useful i don't know if i'd want it on like a start of a run over one of these two i would want it in addition and it's a common item i would probably try to pick it up like as soon as possible so i guess just because of rarity wise i'll put it a little lower but you find you can get this item literally every run and these you might have like one in three or every two runs or something but this is an item that you're going to have all the time and i think that makes it even more powerful next is the cloak of many pockets so this is just 50 percent gold gain um if you have your thief higher you don't really care about this basically this says pick up less gold in the run because if you pick up all the gold then you're just going to get taxed more and once you hit the tax threshold you're not really going to bring any more gold home so this really is like make your run uh plus 50 percent gold gain faster so you don't have to pick up as much gold and it doesn't scale whereas like so it looks like you're getting 50 percent increased gold but it's really just adding plus 50 to your current gold gain so if you have 400 gold gain you're only going up to 450 not going up to 600 so it doesn't scale that well it's really just not that great of an item it's a uh, it's more than nothing it's also at the uncommon level which kind of hurts next we have what is this item this is a spirit cloak so when you take damage you turn invulnerable for three seconds with a cooldown of 10 seconds so that's pretty good every three seconds or every 10 seconds you're vulnerable for three so you have seven seconds where you're vulnerable and three seconds where you're invulnerable pretty good best use cases are probably against thunder snow um if you're standing up close to him he starts to breathe on you you have three seconds of invulnerability to get out of there or if he stomps you you're invulnerable so you don't die to the second stomp or the pushback and the breath so it's kind of nice and that's where you're going to normally find it the most because you're going to get that ace chest right before him and then you're going to have this item so i think this is a uh, probably 
a very solid item. It does do a unique effect, but it's really something you shouldn't really be getting. Like, you shouldn't need that effect. But the effect is cool. I like it. Um, it's obviously not as good as the having just 25% increased health. Uh, but I guess it could technically be better. Like, if you take so much damage in that three seconds, but you might come out of it and still die. It, it's kind of interesting. Because I guess it could scale up higher than, than it. I guess I'll put it in the, the top items. It is very good. I'm not sure really where to place it in here because you're not going to have it on many runs. And these are like your meta items you want all the time. So I'm just going to put it as a top item and kind of let you decide where, you, where you'd put it, what you would like. All right, next we have Adventurer's Garb. So Adventurer's Garb is 25 health and 30 mana. This is a super good item, uh, especially on the Priest. You can attune it. You have 50 HP, 60 mana. Um, that's just a lot of effective health at the common level. So as we said before, you know, okay item was the belt that's like 30 health. I mean, this is 50 health and you get some mana. Uh, so this is, it's probably still going to be just an okay item, honestly. But it is a nice defensive item because it gives you effective health against magic and physical resist, which is just super nice. All right, next we have blackjack. So this is 10% chance to stun enemies for two seconds on primary. And you can attune this to go up to... Essentially 20, but not really. Um, I feel like I keep having to say that just because somebody's going to point it out. But basically, you have two 10% chances, which isn't the same as a 20% chance when you attune it. And uh, yeah, anyway, you get 10% chance on primary to stun for two seconds. So this is insane on primary based characters. Um, really, every character except for maybe the wizard likes this item because a wizard just attacks too slow. Whereas the other characters have either some mechanic like the witch hunter attacks multiple times or the sorcerer bounces and you get to stun all of those things or you know you have the thief or whatever that attack in a sweep uh this item you almost want it on everyone this is a this is a top tier item it's up there with uh yeah it, and it's also a common item so you can get it almost every run you want it like you want evasion like you want crit like you want armor and resist that's it's just a super good item Next we have Vendor's Coin. Vendor's Coin is shops uh, are 25% cheaper. So this is essentially the same as the Cloak of Many Pockets. It's uh, It makes your run just faster because it basically says pick up 25% less gold, uh, which is fine. It's just, um, it really doesn't give your character any stats. It's just you get to pick up less gold. So that's fine. Next we have Cowl of Protection, 25% chance to block five magic damage. When you tune this, you have two 25% chances to block five magic damage. So this five magic damage is applied before anything else. So it cuts it off of the base that the enemy does to you. So normally the, let's say the base is like 10 damage and it gets multiplied by your negative, um, uh, you know, magic resist that you have. So let's say you have like 400% increase. So you would take 40 damage, but instead you're blocking five. So that 10 damage goes to five and then you times that five by the uh, 400% and you're only taking 20 damage. So in that case, it's like super good. Um, so it's actually better than like people think. Uh, I'm just gonna put in the okay items. It's a nice like defensive item. The chance to proc is kind of low, but if you have enough like luck and you have it attuned uh not a bad item to pick up all right now we have this is the crown of kings so 50 percent base health and mana so this is base so it doesn't apply to like your current so you have other plus health from you know this belt or adventurous garb it's not going to take that into account it's going to be your base health at the start of the run um, which essentially is overflowing physique, but an item instead of a drink. And you can get both of them. Um, this is a super good item. I would say this is actually another S tier item. These two items basically do the same thing. They give you a large amount of effective health. A lot of the items I prefer honestly give you a large amount of effective health. You know, resist here, armor here, evasion here. This stun is like a, it's not effective health, but it's like preventing you taking damage and uh really the game is about preventing 
damage and then being able to deal as much damage as possible like this is where this kind of crit comes in anyway crown of kings insane item insane uh it's just very good effective health so this should be assassin's dagger i want to make sure the picture lines up all these swords kind of start looking the same <clears throat> assassin's dagger yeah 7.5 percent chance to score a critical hit on your primary this goes up to uh 15 percent when you attune it so when we looked before this was a 25 percent when you attune it this one's 15 when you attune it so it's actually like pretty good ratio like each attunement gets you a good amount and uh this is just another like this is a top item um even though it's like half of the other one or not even half it's a little over half it's still like crit is so good and obviously it's not as good as Heartseeker or some of these other items but it's an item you're going to want on like every single run as a primary character blood dagger we have a uh, it also gives you additional you know double crit triple crit all that blood dagger so we have 10 percent chance to gain 2.5 percent of your current health back when hitting with your primary attack so again this is going to be mainly for a primary character maybe the sorcerer can use it and the primary bounces a bunch you get a bunch of these uh these procs you attune it you, this goes up to a 20 percent chance so anyway you have 20 percent chance ish to get this amount of health the 2.5 and this is your current health so if you're at 10 health and you proc this you're going to get 2.5 health which i think gets rounded down i'm not really sure what happens there but anyway you either get two or three health back and if you're at 100 hp and you uh you proc this you're going to get uh but it is it uh lost my train of thought you're gonna get more you're gonna get um you're gonna get the 2.5 well wow, i'm like losing my mind anyway um yeah i was wrong about the other one because the 10 health you would get like one you get one health is what it would try to give you i believe but anyway the the issue with this item is when you're at low health it gives you a very low amount of health back and when you're at high health it gives you a high amount of health back which are like the opposites of what you need so this is just this is going to be a more than nothing it, it's kind of okay depending on your character but if you're at 100 hp and you proc this uh you know you're getting 2.5 hp back if you're at 10 health you're getting 0.25 it's it's just not good um i wish it was good it's still better than the old version that was 10% chance to give you five health and you outscaled it super quickly but it is what it is it's blood dagger next we have mage bane so 25% chance to reduce the enemy's resistance by 75% on primary attack for four seconds so again mainly for a primary character this also doesn't work against bosses so that's kind of a shame and when you uh, it's also not attunable so it stays at 25% chance but it always does 75 percent so this scales really well until until the end game or into the end game because it always cuts 75 percent of the resist so it's very good against normal enemies but bad against bosses it's a very unique effect this one's going to be hard to judge i think this is going to be a maybe the top of very solid it used to be like the go-to but i think crit has a uh, surpassed the mage blade the mage bane so anyway now we have <laughs> oh man now we have soul tether so when you kill an enemy a random enemy of the same type is also killed uh this has to do with on your floor so if you have two mini bosses on your floor you kill one it kills the other one uh, it's pretty cool it's definitely a fun item to like play around with you usually can't find it until act three or later um so most of my memories are having it in act five and just watching things get deleted um, it's a super fun item i would other times you find it and it's right before thunder snow so the rarity has a lot to do with this item but when you do find it and you find it early enough this is a it's a very solid item i mean it basically doubles your damage i guess um and extends your damage i can't really think of any other drawbacks for doubling your damage or killing enemies that are not next to you i guess you leech less but anyway i'm gonna say a very solid item i can't say as a top item even though it's super fun to play with and it's also super disappointing when you get it right before thunder snow all right next we have this uh 
Is this the spiked flail? I think it is the spiked flail. I kind of forget the names of these. So it's plus three primary damage, or physical damage on primary. Jeez. Um, and you can attune it to be plus six. So that's a lot because a lot of the starting uh, like primary attacks are like 10 damage. They might go up to 30 at max rank. So adding another six is pretty significant. Um, so I would say this is a very good item. Flat damage is just pretty insane. Um, getting attack power increases your flat damage. So if you increase your flat, it usually gives you more damage than just increasing your uh, percentage. But because there's just so many percent increases, there's not a lot of ways to get a flat increase. So with that said, I think it's a uh, very solid item. All right, next we have some more of the journeyman set. We have two pieces here, so I'll try to look at both of them. So Steady Greaves, three armor and 10 health. So uh, attuning it, 20 health and six armor is very good for a common item. So I will definitely put this in the okay. It's probably up there with the 30 health from this and obviously less than the adventurer's garb that gives you 50 health. Unless you're just really um, needing armor. And then we have the heavy gauntlets, also 15% health. So this is actually completely equal to the belt that was 15% 50, health. All right, next we have Defender's Halberd. So Defender's Halberd is disarm enemies for two seconds when hit. So this is going to be very similar to the Blackjack, and it's also a top item. Uh, the difference on this one is this works with skill-based builds as well because you just have to get hit, and then you disarm them. So it's really, if you're okay with being hit, this disarm prevents future damage for two seconds from those enemies. And this one is more of like a proactive, you hit them and they stop hitting you. And you can keep chaining this here, so it might actually be better. You can keep chaining the stun and they can never hit you. Whereas this one, they have to hit you and then it activates. Them together is even more insane because if they don't get stunned and hit you, then they're disarmed and then hopefully you can pick up the stuns. So very good item. Uh, lucky hat. So this is just plus four luck, and I'm not going to get into exactly like the details with luck, but you can attune it. It's going to go to eight luck. Luck basically increases your percentage for everything to happen. So uh, combat wise. So if you were to try to block magic damage with this cowl, it increases the chance of that happening. If you're trying to crit, it's going to increase the chance of that happening. If you're trying to stun. You're trying to, uh, well not this one, trying to stun, you're trying to activate your Mage Blade, um, or Mage Bane, uh, all of that, all those procs are gonna be higher. So this is like a 10% chance, you bring it up to 20. With attuning it, with luck, the effective chance might even be up to 30. So you really get a lot of juice out of it, and it does all of them at the same time. It also helps with like Phonetic Eruption. This is gonna be another top tier item, probably right under crit. If crit didn't exist, luck wouldn't be good. Um, so I have to say crit is better than luck. That's my, my logic there. The luck is very good. All right, next we have this helm. I think this is the plus seven. It kind of got buffed recently. It's a common item. So great helm. Yeah, plus seven armor and is now part of the shining knight set. So plus seven armor is a lot for an item. Before we have chainmail with five. So uh, this is just going to go up in here. When you attune it, though, it should go into a very solid because it's going to be equal to a, uh, a full plate mail. Which, so very good. Actually, I'm going to put in very solid because uh, with the two men in mind, it's pretty insane. That is 14. These are 10. But it's got, it's got to be the bottom of very solid and the top of okay. But at the common level, you really can't complain. You can get this every run if you want it. Next, we have Shield Breaker. So this is kind of the mirror image of Mage Bane. And Shield Breaker... 25% chance to reduce the enemy's armor by 75% on primary for 4 seconds. So most builds in the game do more magic damage than physical damage. Late game. Early game, it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, it really depends on what type of damage the character does normally. You unfortunately can't craft this at the anvil, I don't think. Wait, yeah you can. Never mind, they changed it. Anyway, so... It's really, it's just not as good as Mage Bane because everyone eventually goes Incendiary Demise and that's plus 40 to your primary. So you end up dealing more magic damage than physical damage. So I'm gonna put this in the K items. It does increase your damage by reducing their armor, but it doesn't increase it as much as Mage Bane. Not nearly as much. Old Map. So Old Map reveals the map. 
Um, I probably don't need to read it, but since we've been reading all of them, it removes the fog of war from the map. So this lets you see where everything is, treasures, all that. It doesn't reveal secrets or anything like that. Um, this is another one kind of like these gold gain items that they're, they basically increase the speed of your run because you have to do less things. But old map is a cut above. It's going to be an okay item. Um, it's kind of the one you would want out of all of them to increase your run. Just because you get to make sure you don't skip any secrets, you can actually skip a lot. It increases your speed by so much more than the others, especially if you don't need XP. Because you can go find all the monoliths, you can find the shop, and you can just exit the floor. All right, next we have Gladiator's Net. So Gladiator's Net, 10% chance of disarm for three seconds on primary. So Blackjack was 10% for uh, two seconds. This is three seconds, so this is even better. And disarm is essentially equal to stun. You can disarm casters and they also don't cast. So yeah, it's basically the same thing as stun, but they can continue to move around. Next we have pickaxe. This is a utility item. Uh, 50% or gain. So you tune, you get 100%. This is great for like runs, but not really good for uh, like progression. It's good for like war runs, obviously. So I'm gonna put this in a uh, okay items because it's utility. A lot of this is going to be focused towards like combat. All right, next we have Fancy Plume. So this is vendors will have more items in dungeon shops. It's specifically two more items. So this kind of scales depending where you are in the game. If you start with this item, it's way better than if you get it in Act 5 after you've visited the last vendor. So I'm going to put this in the more than nothing. It does help like uh, trying to complete certain sets and whatnot, but half the time you find it and your run is basically over or you only have one or two shops left and just doesn't do much or it's offered in the shop you buy it and then you have the two extra to pick from and that's you know your last shoppers or something it's just not consistent so next we have another evasion item this is the rapier of retaliation so five percent increased evasion and when you evade attack a three second when evading attack, a 3 second 25% damage buff is applied. So you get extra damage for evading, which is cool. Um, but it is less evade chance than the the cloak from earlier. The uh, trickster's cloak. So it's actually going to be less than the trickster's cloak, but it's still pretty good. The, the buff is fine. It's just um, you really want that evasion number to be as high as possible. Because when you tune this, and this goes to 12, and this goes to 10... I mean, that's a pretty big difference, 20%. Uh, next we have, oh, gotta go the other way for blue items. Next we have Duelist Edge, this is plus eight evasion. So we're really not even increasing our evasion that much going from a common item to a blue item. When you attune it though, it does go to 16 and that is pretty good from 12 to 16, but I mean, the rarity kind of shows everything. So when evading attack, you return 50% physical damage to the attacker and applies bleeding. So. Pretty nice little bonus. Also with the trickster set, if you evade attack, you get put into combo and you get some more evade for each thing in there. But again, this is not as good as the cloak. This is gonna be uh, still right under it, but a top item for sure. If I can put it in here, there you go. The cloak is just so good. So these rings, these dang rings. So you're gonna find these and you're gonna think they're good, but they're really just not that good. We have Ring of Health, Ring of Mana, and Ring of Rejuvenation. I'll just talk about all of them right here. The 0.2 health regen, it's basically nothing. Even early game is kind of small. By the time you can attune this, you don't care anymore. Uh, Ring of Mana is the best one because this 0.4 regen is almost equal to a Sorcerer NG level. And you attune it and you almost have two Sorcerer NG levels, so that's kind of cool. But you could just play your Sorcerer and get some more levels. So the Ring of Mana will be a little higher and Ring of Rejuvenation... It's, it just doesn't matter. I mean, if you attune it and find it, then you get uh, almost one NG level for the Sorcerer. But really, my advice would be just to uh, save your stars and attune other stuff. Uh, the set bonuses give you 10% recovery for health and mana, but you're really not going to notice a difference. 10% increase of 0.2 is basically nothing you're gonna like the set bonuses for other things but not for these items so they're technically more than nothing but they are so close to literally unusable 
we're gonna put the ring in more than nothing and the other two the uh, mana ring in the more than nothing but the life rings are uh, pretty much dumpster tier all right next we have the bloodthirst ring so this gives you uh leech on your primary if i can find it yeah 2.5 percent lifesteal on primary attack so you can't attune this so it doesn't go up or you can't attune it so it does go up to five percent but everyone that's going primary is getting the chapel bonus it's free it doesn't use an item uh, instead of using an item in the blue or rare slot to start with you can use a different item like one of these uh art seekers or amulet of kings it's still a fine item especially early on when you don't have access to the chapel so i'm just going to put in okay and later in the game when you find it um, you probably don't even want to tune it, but you could if you wanted to. It's like 18 stars. Going from 2.5% lifesteal to 7.5 really isn't that big of a difference, even though it sounds crazy, because you deal so much damage, you're going to heal to full even on 2.5%. The 7.5 isn't going to do much for you. So next we have another regen ring, but this one is at the uncommon quality. So this is the one that gives you... Let me find it. All right, greater ring of rejuvenation so 0.5 health and one mana so this one's pretty good because when you attune it it's like four sorcerer ng levels which is pretty nice and if you take the chapel bonus you get 100 percent more so this is like plus uh four mana regen just from doing that and there's some other ways you can increase it so i'm gonna put this in the okay items um maybe it doesn't really compare to some of these other items like at all but it's a uh, it's definitely more than nothing and it's not very solid, not quite to that level. Next we have the key ring. So 50% chance to get a random key when picking up any key. And you can attune this, that goes up to 100% chance. And then according to the game files, a key chance for bronze, silver, gold, ace should be 40, 30, 25 uh, if a key is gained. So it's basically a way to get extra ace keys. Um, oftentimes you have a lot of ace keys and you don't have a lot of ace chest. So, I unfortunately have to say this is a, a more than nothing you i want to say it's okay but it it's just kind of more than nothing you could always start the run with more keys you don't really have to rely on this it's nice but it's if you're playing in ahead you don't need it all right next we have ring of transmutation so this is an old-time favorite um it's especially good on the priest it used to be good on everyone i'm having trouble finding it yeah 25 percent health has turned into mana so as you take damage to your health, you get mana. Sometimes I'll pick this up if I'm playing like the Thief or maybe the Paladin and I'm expecting to get hit. And so on the Thief, I want to get hit and then I'll get mana and then I'll use my Smoke Bomb. So that's kind of cool. Um, but it's not like a, a guaranteed thing. On the Priest, it's very good because it just kind of keeps you going. I'm going to put this as a very solid item. It just uh, it does a lot of things you want in a passive way. It just helps you skill your abilities when you really need them, especially if you're using like overflowing physique where you're running low on mana all the time. All right, we have Ring of Arcane Powers. So this is spells cost 25% less mana. When casting a spell, you have a 10% chance to restore all your mana. This effect has a two second cooldown. So the first part is good early game, but bad late game because it, it scales the opposite direction that the statues want you to scale. And then you have this uh, skills have a 10 percent chance for sorry mana which is cool um it's a very cool like little ability it does say skills so if you're doing like a primary priest um it's still not going to proc it i guess i could proc it off the orbs but uh, i haven't tested that so i'm not really sure if the passive damage would increase it or not either way it's a it's kind of like utility i would say it's not as good as ring of t uh i'm just going to put it as okay maybe like in the bottom um, it's not really an item you're going to see very often. And when you do, it, you're not going to have mana issues. But if you're using the statues late game, it's going to reduce your damage. And you probably have already found a way to fix your mana issues. You know, on like 9 of the 10 runs that you find this. Alright, next up we have this little cloak. Um, I forget the name of this one. This is a very forgettable item. This is... Mage robe plus 20 mana so that goes up to plus 40 mana uh i guess it's good on the priest maybe it's good on like some of the other casters early game but this is going to be another like basically unusable you don't it's really not even an item this basically just counts as like 
Markham's fodder. It doesn't do much more than that. Enter, it's a part of the two piece set. And you can get plus five resist. That'd probably be the only time I'd buy this if I already had one of the other items and uh, there was nothing else good. I would just go and buy this to uh, get five resist. That's about it. All right, so one of the better magic resist items is the. Oh, I'm blanking on what this is called. Robe of the Arch Magi. So plus 10 skill power, plus 10 resist. So you're going to attune this. You're going to get 20 skill power and 20 resist. So this is a very solid item. This is basically an amulet of kings, but you also get some damage. It's going to be a very solid item. I basically seek this out on everyone uh, when it's offered to me in the shop because I just value resist a lot because uh, most of the hard content is magic based. So if you have amulet of kings and you get offered the uh, robe of the arch magi, go ahead and pick it up. Uh, I mean, the same kind of goes with, it kind of gives you a second Amulet of Kings, not exactly like the full plate mail does with the Armor of Kings, but it's it's very good. Trickster's Boots. Um, so the last piece of the Trickster set are Sandals of Swiftness. So plus one movement speed and plus three evasion. So six evasion for one item, basically equal to the Slippery Cloak, but you also get a free boot of uh, Swiftness in there. So I got to put it up there with my cloak. Evasion is just really good. Oh, what happened? All right, evasion is just really good in general. And uh, we're going to have to put it at the top with the other ones. It is probably, uh, let's see. This one gives you five. This one gives you eight. This one gives you three. And when you tune it, this one gives you six. This one's also common, so you're going to find it more. I'm not really sure where to place this if I had to rank all of them. It's probably second just for the rarity reasons. But actual stats, it would probably be fourth. All right, anyway, let's uh, try to keep going. So we have the Scarab. Scarab of Protection, I believe. Yeah, Scarab of Protection returns 25 magic damage to the attacker when hit and releases a Nova of Poison Darts. This is a nice way to poison if you're using the Azroth statue. Also, if you use an Incendiary Demise, this will put the dot on you, and this will activate each time the dot ticks. So that's kind of cool. And if you're using a way to leech off of magic damage, like Evil Infusion, it uh, basically keeps you... Um, healthy so anyway this is a this is an okay item i put it up probably towards the top honestly it's very good on those builds if you're not playing one of those builds it's it's kind of just whatever you get hit you deal a little bit of damage all right next we have scepter of kings this is plus 40 skill power and you attune it to go to plus 80. So this is going to be a uh this is a very solid item i would say um it's really just flat damage it doesn't give you crazy exponential damage like crit does uh, so i have to put it down here i would say it's probably even like less than mage bane but yeah okay so i mean if it was like crit or something i'd put it higher but since it's just flat damage it's it just not that not that much okay uh we have another crit item so this is the serrated scimitar yeah Traded Scimitar, 2.5% increased chance to score a critical hit on a primary attack. You attune it to go up to 5%. So there's just more instances of crit. You definitely need that. I'm going to put this as a uh, very solid item. This is an item you're going to seek out a lot just to get that extra crit. Because uh, some runs you will start with like the Amulet of Kings and you'll start with um, Lucky Hat or maybe like a a heart seeker that's not attuned and you need to pick up some of these other items that are probably already attuned because they're common and uh, it's just a very good item to find gives you free chances to deal double and triple crits all right flame tongue plus five magic damage on primary attack primary attacks apply burning so it's a way to uh, activate the darian statue flat damage is generally better than percent damage because you just get so much percent damage that the flat damage adds a lot so this is a uh, it's gonna be a very solid item probably on the more towards the bottom um you really don't like seek out this item much but when you find it you're, you're not upset all right the scroll there should be three scrolls so we might just try to knock them all out and they're all about the same so let's find them scroll of magic one and two so magic missiles deal 25 percent damage and has a cooldown of two seconds they're not attunable um yeah you basically just uh I don't even remember what you have to do. Do you have to use a skill or do you have to use a primary? Either way, 
you activate it, it does a flat amount of damage. This will scale with skill power and crit and all that. And it's a cooldown of two seconds. So it's just a pretty long cooldown for this amount of damage. And they just don't do much. So they're going to be more than nothing, but you're really just not that excited for these two items. Okay, uh, seals. We'll just talk about all the seals at once. So we have... Seal of the Martyr, deal one damage more for each 1% health missing. So this could be okay if you're leeching and you're like dying, you deal more damage, so you should leech more. So that's okay, but you have to be dying to get the, the bonus. So I'm gonna put it in here, it's more than nothing. Um, no particular order, all these items are kind of trash. Then we have Seal of Souls. So this one is pretty insane, Seal of Souls. So this is deal 0.5 more damage for each percent mana missing. So this is a very solid item because you attune it and you get 1% more, or 2%, or sorry, you get 1% more damage for each percent mana missing. Usually you're using this on like a primary character. If you're using on a primary character, then you uh, are using overflowing physique, so your mana is always running out. If you're using on a skill-based character, you're casting skills all the time, so your mana is always running out. And you just basically have 100% or 50% increased damage like all the time. Um, or 100% if you have it attuned. So it's just really, really good item. Uh, the last seal is Seal of Rage. Let me find that over here. This is the one where you get attack speed for your missing health. Oh, it's a blue item too. Oh, geez. Yeah, 0.5 attack speed for each uh, percent health missing. And you can attune it to get one attack speed for each health missing. So you can have up to 99% increased attack speed, but you're basically dying. And that's a, it basically works the same as the other one where when you're lower health, you deal um, more damage. In this case, you're doing dealing like faster damage. So you're leeching that much faster. Let's say you get hit, you go down to 30%, you attack 70% faster, and you're able to leech 70% faster to get your 30% health back or 30% health back up to 100%, but uh, it's pretty sketchy. I wouldn't advise trying to play like that. Uh, this is the Buckler. Fern Buckler? Fern Buckler, 25% chance to block 5 physical damage. So this works the same as the Cloak that we talked about earlier, or the Cowl, but it's physical damage, so it's going to be a little lower, so we'll just put it down here in the OK items. Now I have the Tower Shield. This is like a, a juiced up version. This is 25% chance to block 25 physical damage. This blocks crazy amounts of physical damage. You can also attune it, so that's very nice. Um, it's gonna go in the same category. I don't even know if I wanna put it above the uh, the cowl. They're very close. Magic damage is just that important. But we'll just put it in here somewhere. You can kind of rank one higher than the other. They both do effects you want. Uh, Stormcaller, 10% chance to release a chain lightning on your primary attack, dealing 30 magic damage. This is basically the same as uh, that other one we did earlier. Wait, are we, did we already do this one? Where did I put that one? Yeah, it's basically the same as this one. So Stormcaller is very similar to... Earth Splitter. They both um, have a 10% chance to activate and they deal damage. This one does 40 physical and this one does the 30 magical. So depending on how you're scaling, uh, like depending on your penetration in the chapel, you might prefer one over the other, but they both scale with skill power. So they both are basically exactly the same. All right, this is a legendary. This Wand of Chaos, every two seconds a powerful bolt is fired at a random target in range, dealing heavy damage. Uh, I haven't really noticed this damage being very heavy. I think this is kind of in the like more than nothing category. I really don't even notice when I have this item. I noticed the the beam, but it's not like it's killing everything on the screen. It's just kind of it's just kind of there. You're kind of sad when you get this legendary, honestly, versus some of the other ones. All right, so the crit equivalent to Heartseeker is Staff Auto Casting. The Heartseeker was 12, this one's 10. So 10% 10 chance of crit with spells. You attune it, it goes up to 20. So I mean, this is still gonna be the top item. 
these two are up there. Every build wants like basically these three items in the late game, in my opinion, or at least all my builds. So another legendary is going to be Descending and Destruction. 10% chance to drop a meteor, scoring a hit with your primary that deals 100 hybrid damage and applies burning. So since this is your primary, you have to attack with your primary, and it's 10% chance, so it's affected by luck. You can't attune it. So you might get up to like a 20% chance by the end of the run if you found it early. Um, it does do skill damage, and it works depending on, like either way with your penetration in the chapel. The burning is okay. Uh, this is very good, like early NGs, and then falls off because it's just this hundred does not scale. Anything flat like this just does not scale very well. So I'm gonna put this in the. Uh, uh, it's got to be like kind of close to the bottom of okay items. It's just really not that insane. All right, staff auto cast. We got five percent chance to score critical hit with skills. So this is. A uh, pretty insane item, honestly. So this is a 5%. It's kind of up there with Assassin's Dagger, obviously. It's just the spell equivalent. All right, next we have, what is this item? This is the physical penetration stiletto. Physical damage ignores 10% of the enemy's armor. Uh, we were talking earlier that most damage is magical in the game. So this is not like a true 10% increase of your damage. At best, you have a character that's like 50-50. So this would give you additional 10% on the 50 physical damage side. You can attune it, it goes with 20%. So your overall like damage increase isn't really that high from this item. Um, most likely your character is doing like 70, 30, 70% magic damage and like 30% physical. So it is better than nothing. Um, it's just not an item you really like seek out. I'm gonna have to, it is a damage up great though so i'm putting the okay items it's got to be up there with like old map and maybe some of these region rings and whatnot like you wouldn't be that upset finding it because it does increase your damage by a significant amount it's just not like crazy like it seems and this is the same thing but double it and then you attune it and it's 40 percent. so you can avoid some very large amount of physical i mean i'll just put it double as high so instead of the bottom it's in the middle but these aren't in like a, a perfect order. All right, we got these little life stones. So these are the, oh, these are common, right? These are the Midas set that gives you, wait, where are they? Are they common? I thought they were common. Wait a minute. Did I just miss them? Yeah, okay, so we have the mana stone and we have the life stone. Mana stone and life stone. Okay, so these abilities don't really matter. It's a 15% chance to gain one health. You can attune it. I would never attune these. So you'd have a two 15% chances to get one health. That's basically zero. Then you have 60 or two 30% chances to get one mana. That's basically zero. All right, but when you have these two together, every time you kill an enemy, you get two gold, and that is scaled by your gold increase. So as you go up higher in NG levels and your thief gets more plus gold gain, uh, that 2% increases and it actually gets like pretty significant. So this is gonna fall in the same category as like these other items that just shorten your run. But these are something I usually seek out. These are very common and I find them like maybe in like half or a third of all my runs. Um, and just speeds up my runs like a good bit. All right, next up, I think this is Claymore. This might be the other one. All right, Claymore is the second one. So Claymore is 10 attack power and 5 physical. So we already talked about flat damage on primary is super good. It's unfortunate that it's physical, but it is what it is. When you attune it, it's still 20 attack power and 10 physical, which probably is up there with uh, Sword of Kings. So I'm going to put this as a very solid item. It's definitely up there with like Flame Tongue. kind of does the same thing, except it's doing like physical damage. Uh, is this just the, I think that's the common like plus 5 attack power item. It's kind of hard to remember what some of these do. Oh, it's plus 10. Okay, so broadsword. So when you tune it, it goes with 20. So it's pretty good. It's like an elven bow or like a half of a sword of kings when you tune it. So I'm going to put this in the okay items category. Uh, Frostblade. This is just the inverse of the flame tongue. So it still gives you five magic damage on your primary. 
but your primary applies freezing instead of burning. So uh, freezing is not as useful as burning, but if we're just looking at the attack portion, um, yeah, it's it's still like really good flat damage. All right, next we actually have Sword of Kings. So been waiting on this one. So Sword of Kings, uh, 40 attack power. Then we tune it, it goes to 80% attack or plus 80 attack power. So, I mean, that's a good item. Uh, I'm going to put it up here with a very solid. I think it might even be better than the skill one because you could do a run where you start like Sword of Kings, Amulet of Kings. That'd be pretty decent. Or Sword of Kings. Um, I don't even know. Whatever you want. <laughs> Sword of Kings, Ring of T or something. Um, Sword of Kings, Assassin's Dagger would be okay. It was like a, a primary start. But it's not nearly as good as like crit items, so it has to go in the tier lower. All right, next we have this uh, what I call the popcorn ring, because whenever it activates, it sounds like popcorn. But it is the talisman of configuration. So enemies have a twenty-five percent chance to explode and fire uh, when killed, dealing forty magic damage in a small area. So this scales with your skill power, your crit, and all that, your skill crit, and all that, and uh, this scales with your luck. So you attune it, it goes up to 50, and you're luck, you probably have like a 75% chance of this happening. So you get nice little AoE clears. Doesn't work against bosses, but um, it's it's kind of like another item that just speeds up your clear. It's very nice. It's kind of equal to having a soul taker, honestly, because it just kind of like wipes away enemies like that. So I'm gonna put it up here. Um, it's not as flashy as soul taker because it just like explodes in an AoE instead of them just kind of like ceasing to exist, but they're pretty much the same item. All right, next we have Spreading Corruption. So primary attack applies a debuff for 2.5 seconds and jumps to a new enemy when the original target is killed. Affected enemies take 200% more damage. So very nice single target. I uh, don't know if this works against all bosses, but if you are struggling and you need an item to just help deal more damage, this is a, definitely an item I, I tend to pick up. Uh, it's nice that it jumps. It's kind of like underrated in that regard. But trying to think you have to have like a, sh a weird shop to want to pick this over anything else maybe you're just looking for anything that does more damage than uh, spreading corruption is your item so this is a uh just going to be an okay item i'll put it up here it's an interesting way to get damage that you norm can't normally get all right next we have talisman of decay nearby enemies take 20 percent more damage this is good on everyone uh, especially if you're getting in melee range so this is just going to be a, a very solid item it's just free 20% damage, unfortunately you can't attune it, so you can't go any higher, which makes sense. But um, if you need some free damage, Talisman Decay is a very good item. Alright, we're seeing the end of the tunnel. So, a Wizard's Wand, plus 2 magic damage on primary. When you attune this, it goes to plus 4 magic damage. So you're kind of looking at equal to uh, these Flame Tongues and Frostbrand up here. And that's exactly where it's going to go. Because this is just a... Uh, Crazy good item. I guess it's more equal to the flail. Because um, you can't attune these and this will go up to 10 magic damage. And this is only sitting at 4 and sitting at 6 physical. So these order is not quite right. But you get the idea. Flat damage is really good. Alright, now we have the wand of spell piercing. Yes, wand of spell piercing magic damage ignores 15% of the enemy's resistance. And this is attunable so you go up to 30%. So... Uh, this is a nice way to get increased damage, which is kind of equal to the Talisman Decay. The only thing with this one is it does, it scales very well, because it scales like the Mage, Mage Bane, but also almost every um, every class in the game uses more magical than primary damage in their build, or at least late game they all do. So this is actually going to be like a, a top tier item. This is a, you don't want it as much as disarm or crit or maybe some of the defensive king's items, but um, you definitely want this. It's like maybe the best way to get damage after crit items for a magic base build. All right, we have a lot of spheres here. So we have sphere of warriors, time, mana, life. All right, so we're gonna knock out, try to knock out all the spears. So kill requirement uh, for combo is reduced. Usually I have a different way to get into combo, so this is kind of whatever. You can attune it, so it's actually pretty significant in that case. You get a little bit of mana regen in combo. I mean, three is not terrible. Um, you attune it, you go up to six. 
And then with the chapel bonus, you go up to 12. So pretty good in that regard. The life one is not really anything to worry about because you're using um, lifesteal most likely. So I would say sphere of mana and time are better because you can stay in combo instead of trying to get in combo easier. You can stay in combo for two extra seconds. So all of these are um, probably more than nothing category, uh, except for those two that I mentioned. So the sphere of time and I'm looking at all of the, I'm looking at the green ones, aren't I? So it'll be the same though. I'll read them in a second. So more than nothing will be the life ones. The only difference is the amount you get. So if we look at the other ones, small green is 0.75, small mana is 0.5, so they're half the effectiveness of the other ones, and small time is 0.5, and there's not a small red one for whatever reason. But I would say these are all just kind of more than nothing, with this one being the best, because it goes from 3 to 6 to 12 with the double, where this one just goes from 1.5 to 3 to 6. And it's not nearly the same. Uh, you could maybe argue that it should be up there, but just lower. And I value staying in combo more. So uh, I'll just keep it at that. That's fine. Uh, what is this item? Uh, I don't remember what that is. I'm going to put it over here for a second. All right, anyway, uh, hopefully I see that in a minute. But now we have the Greaves of the Barbarian. Which you did say we had two extra items, so it may not be an item that exists. I'm going to put it in here for a second. Uh, let's see. Grease the Barbarian. Killing an enemy triggers a 20% chance to increase movement speed by five, or for five seconds. Uh, not a tunable. So this is just like another one of those. This can increase the speed of your run, but it's not as consistent as old map. Not as consistent as really the Midas set or anything like that. So I'm just going to put it as a more than nothing. It's a nice little benefit. It's up there with a the cloak of withdrawal, they'll be kind of the same. Another apothecary item, this should be the last one. This is apothecary's flask plus one potion charge. So you tune it and it goes up to, oh sorry, this is a different one. All right, we'll just do that one. It goes up to two potion charges. So really potions are just not that good. Um, it's gonna be more than nothing, that's fine. Uh, so we're looking at apothecary's fear. So trigger combo when you, when you drink your potion. So this is, very terrible. Um, I just want to show how terrible it is, so I'm just going to put it literally unusable. Uh, it is down there with uh, this Apothecary's herbs, just because you don't have that many potion charges to reliably activate combo. You can maybe do it against Thundersnow if you're struggling and you're like, I want to be in combo instantly and I want the extra like armor and resist if you have all those pieces. Sure, but it is basically unusable. Not exactly literally unusable. All right, another legendary. We have Phoenix Feather. Automatically use a potion charge one damage instance that would kill you. So uh, people love this item. Um, I think it's overrated. It is like the only item that saves your life if you would die, but you really shouldn't be in a position where you're dying. And if you are, I guess it could save a run that would kill you. Um, it's just going to be okay. Uh, some people might not like that, but I basically never rely on potions. If I do, like something really bad has happened. You can't control when you get this item, so it's a little awkward. It does save you in some cases where you would normally die, kind of like the Spirit Cloak. But the Spirit Cloak has, it's so much more damage that it can save you from. I don't know, maybe it should be very solid. I'm just putting very solid. Because I guess it would be really good, you just don't see it enough. And uh, I don't think you should have to rely on it. Increase attack speed, and or sorry, increase attack and skill power by 60 during combo. So pretty good. Um, you can't attune it, and you rarely find this item, but that is a lot. It's not quite a Sword of Kings. It's not quite a uh, Scepter of Kings, but it's still pretty solid. Uh, I'm going to have to put it somewhere in the very solid. It does give you both, but that doesn't really matter. So it's going to be less than each of them because even though it's both of them together, you, you usually can't really uh, benefit that much off of both. 
Sphere of Heroes shoots a massive Nova projectile when attacking with your primary attack during combo. I mean, the combo Novas are cool. A massive one is cool. Um, but it's just kind of okay. It's not like a, wow, you really need this item to deal more damage. It doesn't make your run feel that much different. Uh, it might kill a few extra enemies. All right, now we have Blowtorch. Blowgun? Blowgun. Shoots uh, four poison darts at a random enemy when casting a skill one second cooldown. So one second cooldown kind of kills this, whereas the Scarab you can activate constantly as long as you're getting hit. Um, this one is only off skills and it's one second cooldown, so this is just like a, a more than nothing. It is a way to apply poison for Azrath, but it is pretty bad at the same time. All right, next we have the bell. So this is the Lantern of Light. Immune to darkness shines a light forward in a cone that reduces enemy resistance by 50%. So since it's resist, it's really good because almost everyone does magic damage. Immune to darkness is nice because you can do like some of the traps without being able to see. Um, there is a part on the vampire boss fight that he makes you not be able to see. So it's kind of nice in that regard. Uh, it's just very good like damage item. 50% resist is huge. That's actually even better than uh, the staff bottle or staff of a uh, bell piercing. So this has to be one of the top items. You just don't really see it. It might even be an insane item. That is insane damage. Uh, you just don't really get it. I don't know if it works on bosses. I know the one spell piercing does. I haven't tested this one enough to know if it actually works. But I'll just say it's a top item potential for being an insane item just because if it works against bosses it's absolutely insane judgment all right this is a really good item as well so judgment is flat 12 damage on primary attack we know how good flat damage is every seventh primary attack hit lowers the health of the target by 2.5 percent so uh, i believe this lowers the current health it doesn't say that but the first 2.5% is better than the last 2.5% and it never like kills just from doing its proc. I think that's how it works, but the 2.5% at 100% health is huge on any of the bosses. Uh, if it's not, it's just 2.5 each. It's still really good because every seven attacks you just get a free 2.5% damage. So anyway, uh, judgment, even the flat damage, like 12 physical, I know we mainly don't do physical, but when you attune this, it goes with 24% physical with some other benefit. So your primary is almost doubled its base amount. Because uh, you could have, like, I think the sword attack from the Paladin is 31. So you'd go up to 55. And Incinerated Mize is plus 40. So it could even be better in that regard. This is going to be a top item. This item is just uh, pretty crazy. It scales really well uh, with the 2.5, even if enemies have millions of billions of health you'll eventually kill them by doing seven attacks you know 2.5 uh you would just need 40 times attacking you know 40 of these procs you'll kill anything so pretty cool in that regard um what is this one tone magic missiles so this is skill power and then magic missiles i don't really care about the magic missile part so it's just a skill power it is a nice little benefit but we're basically going to put it next to this uh skill book which is going to be slightly higher because it has a, an additional ability so the curios so we have three different curios here the top one is 20 health and mana 12 attack and skill power eight armor and resist when you attune that it's an absolutely crazy item um the other ones are you know still good comparable to their counterparts but just not as as high so 10 6 and 4 and then the low one i believe is half of that yeah, five, three, and two. So the curios, I'm honestly, it's a good way to get um, like 16 armor and resist at the same time. It also gives you health and also gives you damage. I'm gonna put this up here. Uh, I think it's kind of up there with Armor of Kings, Amulet of Kings. It's a pretty sleeper, honestly. People just don't use it as much, but even baseline, it should give you so much effective health. Uh, 20 health. 12 attack power, 8 armor, 8 resist, and you attune it and you get, you know, really good returns. And just because of the amount of stats, I mean, this one's going to go in 
here, kind of where the full plate mail and the uh, Robot Arch Magi, which are kind of like these smaller versions of the King's items. And then the last one is kind of going to go down uh, down here with like the uh, the plate helm. I think they're kind of equal as far as effective health. So getting into some Markham's items. So this is the Markham's purse, the 1% gold gain per item in your inventory. Yeah. Um, this is more than nothing. I mean, it's it's technically like another one of those speed you up items, kind of like the vendor's coin. It just scales a little differently. Right next we have Markham Stone. This is the one that gives you increased or gain per item in your inventory. So again, this is similar to the pickaxe, where it's not really something you're going after, but it's uh, pretty decent. Um, and it's very good in like actual ore runs. All right, Markham Scepter. Markham's, or sorry, Markham's Mace is the one attack power per item in your inventory. You attune it, you get two attack power per item in your inventory. So it's pretty good. Um, if you compare it to a Sword of Kings to get 40, you need 40 items, which is somewhere in Act 3. Um, and then when you attune it, you would need 80 items, which is going to be the end of the game. Uh, so I think this is actually worse than the Swords. You do get the set bonus. But it's going to be like somewhere in here, just a little less than the sword because of how it scales. Then this is going to be Markham's Wand, kind of the same thing, but with skill power. Or exactly the same thing, but with skill power. It's going to be in the exact same place, but for skill power. Alright, now I have Markham's Amulet. So this is the same thing, except it gives you health and mana per item in your inventory. You attune it, you get 4 health and 4 mana per item in your inventory. That is absolutely insane. Kind of blows... Uh, the Avengers Garb out of the water, that would be 50, because you only need, uh, what, is that, like 12 ish, 11 items to uh, surpass it. So it is even better. It might even be a top item, because it gives you so much effective health. Hmm. I'm going to put it up here, very solid. I don't know if it's quite a top tier, because these items are just kind of crazy, but I think it's, it's very close. We'll put it at the bottom of the top tier. All right, getting even closer to the end. So these are gonna be reinforced gloves and I'll also do the other reinforced item because they're basically the same, these two gloves. So one's magical and one's physical. So I'll basically just read one. Um, if I can find it. Gloves of Warding provides a passive block of 40 damage with a cooldown of five seconds. The other one does the same thing, but for uh, physical damage. So these items are good. Um, it's kind of equal to the cow. The cow does it beforehand, this does it after, but this is like nice because you have a 100% chance of it happening. So I'm going to put in the okay items, both of them. And the magic one is slightly better than the armor one, as always. Alright, I believe this is the common wand. One of the common wands. Yes, this is the glowing staff. So this is plus five skill power and then plus one magic damage on your primary attack. This is super good early. Uh, it's kind of equal to the spell book, but it's also kind of equal to the, uh, what is it called? Wizard's Wand. Um, but it's kind of like in a weird mix of both of them. So I'm going to put it as an okay item. Flat damage is still really good. It's just uh, you don't benefit fully from it. It could even be a very solid item. I think it is. It's very good damage. All right, the frying pan. So Hero's frying pan blocks most projectiles in a backwards 90 degree arc. Uh, this is like a super high skill cap item. You can have a situation where you're always like facing away from enemies, blocking projectiles, and then you turn your character around to shoot a skill. Like let's say you're playing the sorcerer, you would shoot your orb of winter, and you turn back around to so you'd always be blocking the stuff it's just really hard to use but i think the, the cap on it is pretty crazy this is a it's a very solid item i don't know if anyone really has the micro to do that or has really done it but um it's an it's an item to keep your eye on you can definitely abuse it more than you would think um you can run backwards into traps and block the projectiles that way uh, it's got some interesting use cases. So spike boots, 50 damage when colliding to enemies. 
immune to slippery surfaces. So I'm just going to ignore the slippery surfaces. I mean, that's good for Moon Temple. But 50 damage when colliding, you can attune it so it does 100 damage. This just doesn't scale like super well into the late game. So it's just going to be a more than nothing. Uh, this is Chakra. Chakra's had issues. Um, unleash a Chakra when using a skill, deal 50 physical damage. Two second cooldown. I mean, it scales and all that. Um, but it's also wildly inconsistent. So I guess it's better than nothing. Syrian Sabatons leaves a trail of fire behind the last for five seconds, deals 20 magic damage, and the scales off of your skill power and all that. It's a, it's better than nothing. I mean, it's just not that great. Mechanically, there's just not much you can do with it. Uh, Boots of the Giants, stun enemies for two seconds when colliding, plus 50% health, or plus 50 health, and you can attune it so you get 100 health. And it gives you stun. I like this on primary characters. I think it's a... Uh, Kind of another sleeper item like um like the curios but i'm just going to put it as a very solid item it's like just more defensive though if you're on a primary character you can just run into enemies and they get stunned so it kind of has these stun abilities and like some of the effective health of like the markers amulet it's kind of both of them together it could even be like a top item <laughs> people are going to hate that that's a top item but i think it's actually good there's often times where there's just not enough money or there's too many good other blue items for me to buy it, but I think it's a good item. Pennant of Penance. So you deal plus 50% damage when affected by debuffs. And you can attune it, and you can proc this on yourself by using something like Incendiary Demise. So it's very good on primary characters. This is going to be a top item for sure. Um, actually, I think Seal of Soul should be higher. That's a top item. It's so much damage. They're both a plus a hundred percent damage, which uh, these percentages are, are high enough to to matter a lot, and they get applied like at the right time. Anyway, uh, boots of freedom. Boots of freedom. I forgot what these are called. Oh, they're epic now, aren't they? Yeah, boots of freedom. Immunity to all slow effects. Uh, it's just okay. Um. It's more than nothing. <laughs> Some of the, the epics are just kind of overhyped. It is nice that like you can't be pushed back and you can't be slowed and all that, but it, it's just not like that big of a deal. Uh, Duke's Signet Ring. This is an item I used to think was trash, and then I've slowly like kind of changed my stance on it. I like it a little more now. So anyway, this is a uh, taking damage when below 50% health will spawn an area that restores seven. 0.5% of your max health lasts for 5 seconds with a cooldown at 10 seconds. So um, it restores its health like every second. It doesn't really say that, but it does that uh, for 5 seconds. So you actually get like a lot of decent health. Um, and you can use it when you're stunned, which is like something that's decent against uh, like Thunder Snow. So I'm going to put this as an okay item. I'll sometimes grab this if I have the opportunity just to uh, make sure if I get stomped by Thunder Snow. I can heal up before anything bad happens, which is somewhat useful. Mask of Bewilderment, primary attack applies confusion, 2.5 seconds, 25% damage done to enemies that are confused. So this is like a blackjack plus like a little extra damage. So I guess I have to put this in the top item for that reason, but it's rarity makes it like really not that great. Um, but yeah, it's it's up there. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where I'd put it in here. Maybe somewhere in here. It's definitely not better than evasion, but it's somewhere with these other stun and disarm items. The damage is kind of a little extra. You could take it or leave it, honestly. All right, next we have the pot helm. So pot helm is a super good item. Ten percent chance to block most projectiles. The so same as some of the other ones, like the frying pan and like the paladin shield or like the thief that swats down projectiles. You attune it, you go up to 20% chance. You use Callus, you go up to 40% chance. It's also in a 360% around your character. Um, pretty good. I would say this is a, this is a top item, maybe an insane item. Hmm. Lock is super good and lock increases it. We're just gonna, we're just gonna put it as a top item. It, it might be even higher, but it's gonna be up here somewhere with evasion. I would say maybe like right here. 
Uh, I don't know if I like it more than evasion. Maybe like right under evasion. There we go. I'm happier with that. Uh, lucky charm. So this is the plus luck common item. Uh, yes. So plus one luck, plus ten gold gain. You can just ignore the gold gain. Doesn't matter. It's all about the luck. You attune it. You go to two luck. Uh, I'll put it as very solid. Luck is just really good. Uh, this is the poison item on primary. So 20% chance to apply poison for four seconds on primary attack. So this is like the best way to apply Osrath. This is just going to be a uh, okay item. It's just an enabler. It doesn't really do anything by itself, but it enables uh, Osrath for you. Next, I have Lucky Horseshoe, plus two luck and movement speed. Movement speed actually relevant here. But you're still looking at the luck. The plus four luck is basically an extra lucky hat once you attune this. So I'm going to put this as a uh, a top item, I think. It's an item you're always going to be looking for. Ooh, another underrated item, sleeper item, is the Gracious of Quickness. Increase attack speed by 10%. You attune it, go up to 20%. So this is equal to a Kyra statue. But also, there's not a lot of ways to increase your attack speed. So this is a very solid item. Um, actually, it's a, it's a top item. It's like if you're capped on how much damage you can do with your primary by the, let's say you're doing 100% of your damage because you're you're attacking, but you increase your attack speed by 20%. You increase your damage by 20%, and that's a uh, pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Uh, skill speed this is also good. Uh, increase skill speed by 10%. This isn't as good as attack speed, um, but it's still worth having. I just wouldn't I wouldn't go after it quite as much. You're still getting some from I forgot if it's the Wilmer or the Cedric, but it's it's a very solid item. You get the skill speed. It doesn't really do much until late game when you're playing like the sorcerer or the warlock and you're doing just tons and tons of abilities all the time and you can essentially reduce their cooldown by adding skill speed. And you can have two orbs of winter out, or you can have 100% uptime on your um, thunderstorm, whatever it's called. And uh, that's just very nice. So next we have Skull Smasher. Every fifth attack can trigger an explosion, impact dealing 30 physical damage. So it's kind of equal to the other one, the uh, Storm Caller, and the other one. So we're just going to put this in here with the other two. They all kind of do the same thing, just in a different way. This should be the hunter's hunter's weapon. Yes, the hunter's knife. Twenty percent damage done to beast. Beasts have a two percent five percent chance to drop meat when killed. That's okay. It's extra damage to thunder snow. You attune it, you get forty percent extra damage to thunder snow. Pretty decent. Um, it's better than nothing. I'm just gonna say it's okay. It's kind of equal to these uh these books, these encyclopedias manuals whatever uh, essence charm is going to fall in the same kind of category this one's just undead and gives you uh, mana instead and trying to oh there it is all right 20 percent damage on dead and dead have a chance to draw mana crystals when killed so 40 percent chance on dead so gonna be the same thing it's literally up here with the undead book that gives you 40 percent but you get xp instead bomb pouch bomb pouch is when you evade you drop a bomb and the bomb does 100 hyper damage that skills your skill power, gives you a little skill power to go with it. So it's at least the same as a skill book. You're gonna tune it. So it goes with uh, 40 skill damage. So pretty nice there. And I value evasion. So this is going to be an okay item. Um, definitely higher than these skill books. Maybe higher than some of these other ones. I probably wouldn't put it higher than the defensive items, but it's, it's somewhere in there. Next, this should be Elven Ruby. So Elven Ruby, if I can find it. Uh, oh, there it is. All right, casting a skill increases all damage dealt by 50% for three seconds. Seven second cooldown. So kind of weird, but you basically have uh, three seconds where you're dealing plus 50 damage and then four seconds where you're doing uh, your normal damage. So it's a pretty big increase in your damage. It's not quite 50% of the time you have 50% increased damage but it's nearing it, so it's a nice like free boost of damage. I'm gonna put this in the uh, very solid, maybe towards the bottom. 
Because it's just free damage if you're doing a like a skill beat. Well, I guess you could use it on any character. You still get the skill boost. Guardian statue. Uh, this is a rare item. Summons a spirit guardian when you're below 66% health, 12 second cooldown. Uh, I haven't found that the guardian really does much of anything. So I'm going to put this as like more than nothing, but it, it's basically unusable. Now we have another pickaxe. This is the dwarven pickaxe, so you get ore when you kill constructs. Uh, very good for ore runs. It's just going to go basically with the other ore items. This should be another legendary. This is the... Oh no, what is this? Oh, it's the Wilmer's Wand. Okay, so 20 skill speed. And your moves movement penalty for all skills. So very nice on a skill build for the skill speed. And the movement speed is kind of nice because if you're not in combo or you you uh, have a penalty when you cast when moving, kind of nice there. But it's uh, kind of like a okay. Um, it probably should be equal to... Hmm. I think I have to move this one down to okay as well. I don't think the skill speed is as crazy as like the attack speed is. The attack speed is obviously crazy. Um, skill speed might ramp up in the later stages of the game, but the movement speed is like really cool. Such a cool like design. All right, now we have this lamp. So summon Nimbus when picking up mana crystals. Nimbus does pretty good damage. Um, definitely early on, it does pretty good damage. But I'm just going to have to put this in the more than nothing. It's not like insane. He's not going to carry everything for you. But um, he's nice free damage if there's enough like mana crystals around. Or if you have like a, the undead essence item that gives you a bunch of mana crystals. So now we have these two items. So we have the waning crescents and the waxing crescents. They're 25 attack power each. You can't craft these at the anvil, which is their big downfall. And they're part of a set that gives you uh, bonuses for lunar shields that you have. But I've never been able to have these two items at the same time. So I don't even think it's like really feasible to try to do it. Because um, the items are just really rare. And then 25% attack power. I mean, you can basically break down the 25% attack power. It's... A little better than an elven bow but you can't attune it so maybe it's a little less than an elven bow so it's, it's somewhere in that kind of category so if you're at the point of the game where you have an attuned elven bow uh, they're better if you're at the point where elven bow is attuned elven bow is way better so it's kind of just dependent on what's going on now we have dragon's tail your damage is increased by one percent per a thousand gold depending on where you find this in the game if you found this after you just deposited before thunder snow it's a it's a terrible item you don't have any gold um if you found it like early and you can just start banking gold to get all this extra damage it's pretty insane so i'm gonna put this as a uh, a top tier item um it could be an insane item like the the potential is so high but you have to get it at the right time where these it doesn't matter where you get them they're always going to be good um, so it might be like right here as well. And then we have two more items. Uh, didn't we already do this one? I think that's the essence collector. So. All right. So the last we just will have the tax item. I'm not sure about this other one. I'm trying to find it. All right, so it reduces the tax rate, which basically just gets you a little more gold. So uh, it just kind of speeds up the run, like whatever. So I'm just going to put this more than nothing. I don't really remember where this item goes or what it is, uh, and I can't really find it. I know we look... Oh, there it is, Essence Collector. All right, so I think we already did this one. So I'll just go ahead and put that there. And yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, there it is. All right, so that's going to be the tier list. Um, wow, well, was a long video. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm also curious what you guys think of the list and maybe some things you would rank differently, items that you found that have been really beneficial, but uh, I ranked lower or vice versa. 
um, maybe you learned something and there's some items that uh, you're going to look at in a little different light. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.